uh, listed out. And this is what rational functions look like. <clears throat> a rational function is might be described as a polynomial fraction, where we have one polynomial divided by another polynomial. That is what we have on number one, right? We've got, well, on the top, <clears throat> I do have uh, x minus 2 over x minus 3. So I've got a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Um, might be best to look at number 3 here, but yeah, I've got a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Now, the number 1 and 2 have a much simpler polynomials. Uh, on number 2, I've got, you know, the top one is just 5, bottom is 4x minus 7, but those are polynomials, simple polynomials. So we sometimes just uh, say it's a polynomial fraction. One polynomial divided by another polynomial. Sometimes you'll maybe see it uh, p of x over q of x <coughs> is uh, maybe a notation you might see, but you just have a polynomial divided by a polynomial, whether it's a big polynomial or a small one. That's what it is. Okay, so first of all, let's note, next of all, that <coughs> there are some excluded input values for these rational functions. That is, there are values of uh, x that x cannot be. For example, on number one, the input value x cannot be three, right here. So I'm saying right here on number one, x cannot be three. Why not? Why can't x be three there? Because if x is three, what's the denominator? If x is 3 here, doesn't that make the denominator be 0? And if you try to divide something by 0, punch that in on your calculator or try to divide it by hand, whatever, can you divide by 0? Cannot be done, okay? Yeah, <clears throat> so we would say x, uh, the excluded value there is x cannot be 3 because that would make the denominator 0. All right, that's why we have to exclude it. Denominator zero, always bad. All right, so that would mean, as far as the domain goes for number one, x can be, so the domain are the input values, the x values. What can x be? For As far as the domain goes, what is the domain? x can be one, x can be two, x can be three, and might point that out, x can be two. Two would make the top zero, but the top zero is okay. Right, if x is two, the top would be zero, but the bottom's not zero, so it's just the bottom can't be zero. Uh, so the domain here, all real numbers except three. Or, in shorthand, <laughs> x can't be equal to three. Okay, That's my domain. The domain for number one is x cannot be equal to three. All right, what about number two then? What are the excluded values for the function and what, what's the domain for number two? f of x equals five over four x minus seven. Well, the point of this is, if you're thinking about rational functions, uh, your excluded values are values that make the denominator be zero. Excluded values for a rational function are values that make the denominator zero. And so to find them, to find them, set the denominator to zero. Okay. All right, so we set that denominator number two to zero. Four x minus seven equals zero, so that's going to give me. Uh, 4x uh, equals 7, add the 7, divide by 4 then. So x equals 7 fourths. That's my excluded value for number 2. So what does that make the domain? Well, if that's excluded, then my domain is everything except 7 fourths. So you could say all real numbers except 7 fourths, or x cannot be equal to 7 fourths. 
So x could be anything except 7 fourths. With me? All right. What about number 3? What is the domain for function number 3 then? Well, we know that number 3 has, just like number 2 and number 1 had, it's got a denominator, so the denominator cannot be equal to 0. <clears throat> and so my excluded values are going to be where the denominator equals 0. So set for number 3, x squared plus 4x minus 12 is the denominator, so set that equal to 0. And solve, uh, solve that, well that's just going to factor a little bit. x and x, uh, 12 and uh, 4 in the middle, 6 and 2. So it'll be a positive 6 and a minus 2. Uh, x plus 6, set that to 0, so that's going to give me x is negative 6. And x minus 2 equals 0, so that's going to give me x equals 2. So those are my excluded values. But the question was, what's the domain? And so the domain here, see if I can erase a little bit of this. So what's the domain for this one? Well, the domain would be everything except negative 6 and 2. That's one way you could write it. So you can say all real numbers except negative 6 and 2, or you can just say x not equal to negative 6. Okay. All right. With me on that. Now let's talk about the graph a little bit. We're going with a new function here, and it's f of x. Let's look at the graph here of f of x equals 2x plus 1 <clears throat> over x minus 1. We can start with something we know. We can complete a table and plot these points. If x is negative 3, what is the y value? Negative 2 and so forth and so on. Okay, so let's complete the table for, uh, for those values and then plot plot those points. All right, so if x is negative 3, we would have the y would be, uh, plug in negative 3, negative 3, so that would be negative 6 plus 1 divided by negative 3 minus 1. That's a negative 5 over negative 4, which is about a 1 point positive to 1.25. Okay, so it's just, just you doing what we know. All right, so x, uh, x is negative 2, do the same thing. That would be negative 4 minus, uh, negative 4 plus 1 by negative 2 minus 1, so that's a negative 3 over negative 3. Hey, that's nice. That's positive 1. Did that right. If x is negative 1, we would have, what, negative 2 plus 1 over negative 1 minus 1. So that's negative 1 over negative 2. That's a positive a half, 0.5. x is 0, so we have 0 plus 1. 0 minus 1, so that's negative 1. All right, uh, if x is 1, do it right here. It's 2 plus 1, that's 3, over 1 minus 1, that's 0. 3 divided by 0. Error on your calculator. <laughs> Undefined. Yeah, that's our excluded value, isn't it? All right, then 2, x is 2, we have uh, y would be 4 plus 1, that's 5, 2 minus 1, that's 1, that's 5. x is 2, y is 5, and x is 3, 6 plus 1 is 7, 3 mi minus 1 is 2, so 7 halves, 3 and a half. All right, so plotting those out. Um, All right, we've got negative uh, 3, positive 1.25. Right about there, negative 2, positive 1, 1, 1 half, 0, negative 1. 1 is excluded, 5, 2, 5, 3, 3 and a half. All right, 
Okay. Doesn't give us a whole lot to go on. But <clears throat> skipping ahead here, here's what we can learn about the values around x is 1. We said at x is 1, we've got an excluded value. But if you look at points around that, if you do x is 0 0.5, x is 0 0.9, well, x is 0 0.5, you got y value of negative 4. So right there. At x is 0 0.9, real close to 1, you got negative 28 right there. At 1.1, 1 .1, we're at 32. So that's up here. At 1.1, 1 .1, it was at 32, so that's up here, just off of the 1. And then at uh, 1.5, I'm at 8. So at 1.5, I'm at 8, right about there. Okay, <clears throat> well, connecting, uh, connecting some dots here, here's what we can see. If we connect these dots kind of on the left, here's what I've got. Then I connect the dots on the right, here's what I've got. So it looks like on the right of 1, these values are going up and up and up. And on the left of 1, these values are going down. And that's exactly what's happening here. We say, down to my word, the graph is said to have what's called a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. A vertical asymptote. You can draw, uh, if, you, <clears throat> if you have a vertical asymptote, what you do is you draw in a, like a dotted vertical line at your vertical asymptote. So at one, there's this, it's not uh, going to be shown in the graph, but we can do it <clears throat> in there to uh, give us a guideline, if you will. Yeah, <clears throat> we have a, a vertical asymptote, so draw that in as a vertical line. Now, why do we have that at 1? Well, we said earlier, what is 1 for this function? x is 1 is a excluded value. Excluded values for rational functions, they are a lot of times going to give you these vertical asymptotes. So in general, the graphs of rational functions will have a vertical asymptote at an excluded value, which that means denominator is 0. Okay, so whenever you have those denominators equal zero for the ones that we do, you'll have a vertical asymptote. Okay. All right. So flip over to this back page on the handout there. So from the work on the first page, here's what the graph looks like. A little better than I had drawn in, but it's the same thing, isn't it? Now to complete the rest of this graph, <clears throat> what I need to do is look at what happens on the ends? Remember we talked about end behavior for the polynomial functions, but what about the end behavior for these rational functions? We have uh, something a little different happen on the uh, end behavior for the rational functions. That's what we're looking at now is end behavior for these rational functions. Well, <clears throat> for, for end behavior, what we're talking about are x values either on the negative side of the x-axis or the positive side of the x-axis as you go out further and further and further. So that's why I've selected x is negative 4, x is negative 6, x is negative 10. I've done the work here for us. x is positive 4, x is positive 6, and positive 10. Okay? All right. So what we see is that x is negative 10. I'm at 19 elevenths, which is 1 and 8 elevenths. So it's right above the 1. Right above 1. 1 and 8 elevenths. All right, then this is 1 and 4 sevenths, so it's a little bit uh, lower, but it's, it's right around the 1. Uh, 7 fifths, so that's 1 and 2 fifths, 1.4. Uh, yeah, all right. <clears throat> and then on the other side, whoop, that was negative 4, wasn't it? Negative 4, it's 1.4 at negative 6, I should have said is 1 and 4 7. So that's right there. 1 and 2, 8 11 is there. Okay. All right, at positive 4, I'm at 3. 
Then I'm at uh, 13 fifths, which what is that? Two and three fifths. And this is two and one third. Okay, so two and three fifths, 2.6, 2.33, at six, two and three fifths, two and a third, 10. Okay, so here's, here's what we see. These points are not doing a whole lot out here, are they? They're just kind of leveling off here. These points are leveling off here. Well, plot the tables before and notice the end behavior. Let's say here, generalize this to say the behavior, the end behavior levels off on both sides. <clears throat> and that's what will happen on a lot of these rational functions. The end behavior, a lot of these rational functions is going to level off on the ends. Okay, <clears throat> well, this end behavior like this is said, the graph is said to have what's called, it's another asymptote, but as you can see, it's not vertical, it's horizontal. So we have a horizontal asymptote that describes the end behavior. And I <clears throat> specifically tell you here, the end behavior uh, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. Notice it is leveling off about 2 here. So if we draw a horizontal line at 2, vertical line at 1, but a horizontal line at 2, dotted line, we have that's where our horizontal asymptote is. Because you can see these values, as we get further out, yeah, this is these are getting closer and closer to 2, 3, 2.5, so they're coming down to 2, if you will. These are going up to 2 on the left. But anyway, it, they are they are going to 2. Now why why 2? Well, if you look at our original function, which was 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. <clears throat> if I divide the leading terms there, 2x divided by x, what do I get? Well, the x's cancel, I get 2. That's not by coincidence, okay? That that's 2 and then the horizontal has 2. Yeah, if you have leading terms that are matching terms that cancel out like that, that gets you your horizontal asymptote. So in general, a rational function that has the degree of the numerator equal to the degree of the denominator, so just like we've got here, 2x to the first, x to the first. In general, the graph has a horizontal asymptote uh, at y equals a over b, where a is the leading coefficient of the top, and b is the leading coefficient of the bottom, which you know here is just 1. That's what you get for your horizontal asymptote. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> let me just tell you, what if, so what if I had f of x equals uh, 3x minus 7 divided by x plus 2? What's the vertical asymptote? Well, the vertical asymptote from the previous page, what do we do? Set the denominator equals 0. That gives me the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is going to be where the denominator equals 0. So that's going to be x equals negative 2. Be my vertical asymptote. What's the horizontal going to be? Well, the horizontal, you do y equals a over b if they're equal to degree. So what's my a and b here? Well, you can say 3x over x if you want to be 3. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be 3. One quick one, more quick one. What if I have 5 over uh, x minus uh, 3? What's the vertical asymptote there? 
Well, the vertical asymptote, you set the denominator equal to zero, so you get x equals three. Horizontal is a little trickier here. Because do the degrees match here? No, the top degree is, well, you don't have an x. But what I could think of it as, if I want to do my y equals a over b, if I wanted to, couldn't I write x uh, uh, 5, couldn't I write that as 0x plus 5? So essentially, the a over b is 0x over 1x, that's 0. So I, I can make the degrees match there, you see. And there's a couple of uh, other things we need to talk about, but we'll talk about them next time, so I'm out of time.